Well, it's a typical Wednesday night here on the Barry Funkhauser Show, and man, we're going to a guy, we're, we're going to talk to a guy, Joe, today that's all about smoke and dope and rock and roll. Are you excited as I am? Hey, we're talking to just me? I don't understand. <laughs> So, wait, oh, man. oh wait there's someone else on the program oh okay i understand i didn't know i was going to be able to carry the program the whole time so go ahead andy frasco's here with us today hey andy frasco <laughs> hey, hey aren't you yeah. aren't you the, the resident artist on 88.5 fm this week i am every sat I've, I've, I've been doing it the last every saturday it was the good. whole oh, month the, of may oh, the dude whole month oh yes. wow congratulations <laughs> are you guys from la yeah, dude, I'm on my show airs right after yours on 88.5. So I get to listen to you coming in and I'm like, dude, this guy, I want to be his friend. <laughs> and it's like from Los. OK, so I think, Barry, you're actually from Los Angeles, right? You you grew up in the LBC. Yeah, I was born in Long Beach, but I All reside right. in Ventura County. All right. So oh, nice. so my, my buddy, Tim, my buddy, Tim, hates the fact that I don't claim Orange County anymore because, man, I freaking hate orange county but i grew up in fullerton and fullerton was pretty cool because uh you know we had social distortion and no effects and a bunch of great ska bands coming up when i was a kid in the 90s because i'm old as dirt so um <clears throat> i'm not from los angeles but i claim los angeles because i've been here for like 25 years so i does that does that count yeah i think it's that, fine that that, that, that's fine all right Andy, are you from are you a, a native yeah, I'm born and raised in uh, San Fernando Valley, 818, where all the porn's oh, made. Oh, that's like, the uh, best. I'm, I'm, I live in Sherman Oaks now. It's like the best Oh, let's here. go. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I love the I, I left when I was 19. I've been, you know, living in a coffee can van for, you know, 15 years. <laughs> My life. Hey, but... we've all you know we've all been there. You know, I've lived <laughs> not all car. of us, Everybody. dude. He's on the you've road, never, dude. Wait, you've never lived in your car, Barry? Not yet. I mean, <laughs> no, there's still not tomorrow. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lived in my car for about three months, man. It was only three months, so luckily it was only. What three kind months. of car did you have? Oh, I had a, uh, I had a, a red, nineteen ninety Honda Civic hatchback. So if you put all the seats down and you put a, a foam mattress back there, you could have. I, I was, I, I was able to hit <laughs> the yeah, front probably. and the back of the seat with my head and the back of the car with my feet. It was just long enough. I, I made it. You know what? I made it work. I was in Santa Barbara. I all of my roommates had just like moved. I had graduated. Everyone left. The radio station I was at was like floundering. They brought in like a whole new team, fired literally all of my friends. And so I'm like the last dog standing. I'm like, man, I can't find a place to live. It's like rent was like starting to explode in the late 90s. I was just like, can I just sleep in my car in the parking yeah. lot? Hey, they have a shower in the station. It works. It totally worked. Sometimes I would just like on the weekends, I would just like take an old like a, one of the empty studios and I totally converted this empty studio into like an apartment for like a month until my boss was like, dude, you, you can't sleep. In you got to go home. Joe. You got to go home. There's man. Cheeto crumbs all over the control <laughs> board. Joe. Yeah, exactly. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah, dude. But Andy's been in L.A. was like, uh, you know, car sex. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. You can just park anywhere. Good. There's so many parking lots in LA because everyone has to drive, and um, you know, it's like everyone's like always has somewhere to go. So everyone's like, "Oh, well, we could have sex for like 20 minutes." I'm like, "Okay, that sounds cool." <laughs> <laughs> go to a parking my, lot. Uh, my go-to was there's an overlook on Ball Hall, and then I always used to go to. Let's go. I'll we'll clap to that. No, I like I, Andy, I think you're just <laughs> economical. You're going to like the Northridge Mall parking lot. He's like, he's like, man, there's a parking lot like two minutes away from. You probably know all like the over there. all the signs on the streets. I where really you can did know. I, I used to be addicted to sex when I was like in high school and like going into college. So like, I knew all the dark spots that I, <laughs> me and my girlfriend, because I couldn't. My my parents were pretty prude about like hooking up. Oh, and hey, I, I'm right there, right there with you, man. Catholic so, family, right here. Yeah, I feel, I'm Jewish guilt too. You know, Catholics and Jews, <laughs> the same vibe. Exactly. Right? Catholic guilt, Jewish guilt, it's all the same. I was just a nerd. I don't have an excuse. <laughs> oh, you weren't, you weren't hooking up. <laughs> same, same <laughs> These so, are all stories. These are all I new to me. I wasn't hooking up in high school. You weren't? No, no, no. Barry. That was no, Barry. I was, dude, oh. I was a dork. I went anyway. to an all guy high school and I hooked up more than Barry did. With, well, with like, all girls school and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good times. I love it. Yeah. It's, um, you know, the LA hustle, you know, it's like 
everyone has to do that's one thing i appreciate about los angeles is um everyone is really trying to you know make a name for themselves like the locals at least you know it's like i i i, t- I got taught work ethic from the locals in la you know because everyone's like on on a mission to like do whatever they got to do to make it affordable to fucking live here you know well, I, yeah. I think it's also just we kind of also just like want to have fun you right. know so a lot of times sure sure like we're all working and we're all like at the nine to five but you know after that we're like okay so so i got i did the job that's gonna pay the rent now i'm gonna do the fun job you know yeah, and, and i'm gonna black like, out till 4 a.m <laughs> you know or something yeah, like yeah, that you know? you know and it's funny because andy is a local just like us and so born being born and raised here you meet all these people that move here chasing a dream and right. you kind of got the same vibe that we do. It's like, wait, you know, it's about all about having fun in yeah. the end of it. Yeah. I mean, like why work so hard if you can't enjoy it? You know, I think that's what LA taught me too. Is like we could work and we could work and we could save our money. It's awesome. But that's not fun. <laughs> No, no, that's not fun. Like I was, I was doing like, you know, video game marketing and I'd get done at like six and then I'd be like, okay, cool. What's up for tonight? All right. Dodgers are in town. Let's go to a Dodger game. Exactly. Cause like back in the day, it was like, you get top deck for like five bucks. Yeah, you know, that I was remember like those nice with Mike out. Piazza years. Yeah, yeah dude. Eric, oh, Go- Eric Costco or yeah. Austin. Yeah, that's the no. skateboarder. Fernando <laughs> Venezuela back. No, that's oh. way too. Though. Oh, that's when top deck seats were two bucks. That's when yeah, you can get in. You can take your whole too. family. Now it's like no, that, like uh, kimchi yeah. Dodger dogs and stuff. Exactly. You know, I remember it was just you know? Know? totally different. So but like raw. after work, it was like it was like okay, sure, Dodger game, or am I working a concert? Am I doing the door at a show tonight? Am right. I like going over to a, a buddy's house and he's teaching me how to like you know mix? You know, it was always something. It was always like, hey Joe, do you got time tonight? I need someone to you know help me with promotions at this uh, movie premiere. Yeah, sure, man, let's do it. That sounds like fun. That was the same yeah, thing with me. Like I used to work. I worked at Drive Through Records when I was uh, fifteen years old. Dude, oh, dude, I worked Atari's, at Drive Through yeah. Records. No way. Yeah, Richard and Stephanie are assholes, man. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, when did you work there? Like I worked there uh, in I the late nineties with like. Oh, oh dude, you were like right after. Dude, you were right after me. That's funny. Um, do you know Mikey Sabs? Yeah. Yeah, dude, Mikey said I I I managed Limit Point for like a few wow. years, man. Uh, yeah, so I used Mikey to I used to book Hello Brian Goodbye. Yeah. yeah, no, dude, Brian Shaw, like, dude, I, I remember Brian Shaw. Yeah, yeah, Brian Shaw. Um, I worked at Drive Through for the first, um, uh, oh god, what uh, Newfound Glory record, the first Newfound oh, yeah, Glory yeah, record yeah, that, that was on Drive Through. I worked that record at Drive Through. Yeah, I worked because um, I, I was I working did, uh, at MCA as, as well. Yeah, yeah, and then they got bought by Geffen. So yeah. I, 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 oh, I, I moved. I worked there on the uh, leaving through the window something corporate record. Oh, okay, okay. And then gotcha. how they signed Hello Goodbye, and they signed um, Steel Train, who is now um, you know Jack Antonoff. Right, right. Um, um, you know, you know that's they were. Funny you had a bad experience with Richard. And then, oh, they were weird people, man. El- really? and they were just, they were just kind of jerks to me. Um, they yeah, were kind they, of jerks to Mikey they, Sabs too. Um, but the they, one they, thing that was pretty cool is through them, I met the dude from Bloodhound Gang. Oh, cool. um, I met Corey Feldman because they were like they're really good. Friends yeah, they were homies Feldman. with Corey. I remember that. Um, but Richard and Stephanie lost Dashboard Confessional. He was like gonna sign, yeah. and they were so weird to him. That really? he left and went immediately went to to, to vagrant. Uh, yeah, he went to uh, you know to vagrant. I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, that was like, oh man, that's weird. Hopefully they're okay. But I had a bad. Oh, experience they're killing it. Yeah, they weren't he, like. I mean, they taught me the greatest. music industry. I mean, maybe a couple years of uh, being dicks to people, they finally realized. Hey, maybe. <laughs> that's but it's also that hopefully they were between New Yorkers and this is the difference between New Yorkers and New Jersey folk versus us passive aggressive la people like we're not gonna tell you how we feel we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna stare at you and glare at you and tell you everything's all good and the the, the jersey or new york is like you guys are pieces of shit you know like <laughs> right and tell like, you I right away i i think it was that i think i was that i think i was oh, um man. i was like mid-20s at that point yeah. i i had some experience but not like very because they're like 10 years older than me so they they've yeah. been around for a little bit Right. Um, and maybe it was that maybe it was just the they weren't necessarily jerks. They were just abrasive. And I yeah. wasn't 
ready or used hey, Joe, to it. Hey, Joe, and the other and thing is, take it. it could have been yeah. you. You know, oh, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it was me because I got fired. I got I got straight fired. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it was me. Uh, but that's okay. I got fired too. I got fired too. But um. Oh hey, look at that. Oh Andy, we have fired. so much to talk shout about. Shout out to fired. Shout out to getting fired. Yeah, shout out right. to getting fired. All right. Uh, well, okay. Were still, were they still working in their garage in in Granada no. Hills? My dad. Oh, okay. My dad was a commercial real estate broker in the valley, and he leased them their first office building and oh, he didn't realize he didn't realize that i was like such a pop punk head because my fair band growing up was like i loved all that like something corporate lag i did i mean i did the warp tour that was like following oh lag wagon i actually yeah. worked on uh the lag wagon album uh too actually uh when they were recording at orange whip studios in santa barbara oh yeah um i was uh i was second engineer on a couple of those if you look at the uh liner notes for double platinum it'll say in the first four lines it'll say uh thanks to fat joe at khty 975 that's me that's sick <laughs> yeah you do have a radio voice joe oh well thank you man i, I well thank you i appreciate that, <laughs> that there we go and, and not All to right, interrupt the bro down here and, and me yeah. and you let's we got to we, we got to start talking i got more questions about man it's oh, 11 minutes in i haven't even been able to ask one freaking oh, question God. yet gosh you, you know, guys are but, but you know it's like baseball dude, industry have, talk over here with the whole do you I know have, this guy at this I label do. oh i was there come on we Poor. talk about this all the time i know everybody here <laughs> Poor yeah, Barry. I, I he's just in the middle of two narcissists. You know, it's like a <laughs> exactly. Right All right, I'm going right, to okay. shut up so Barry can ask his questions. Go. No, man. I mean, because uh, the people want to know where Andy Frasco came from. I mean, we got a little taste of it. You you started in the record industry as like a promoter guy, it, behind the scenes as a suit, making yeah. sure a Dashboard Confessional gets their green M and M's, <laughs> and everything's good. So, but how did you tell us your story up to this point? Um, so I, I fell in love with the music industry. I grew up in the Valley. We just had the opportunities to like book shows. So I was booking shows at the Cobalt Cafe in Canoga Park. And then I was <laughs> oh, that's a great place. Yeah. And then Roxy and then the Key Club. I had a residency at the Key Club and I just oh, nice. loved live shows. I wasn't in the jam scene yet. I didn't know anything about the Grateful Dead. I mean, LA didn't really have that really didn't know anything about fishes of the world. And, you know, we knew like pop and how to like chase the rabbit's tail to try to get a big a record deal. And um, and I didn't know how to play an instrument, but I loved being on stage. I was I was like the host of these open mics and stuff. And then um, all you know, five years later, all, every band that I used to manage or book or yada yada would just break up because you know, and, and the guitar player fucked the you know the bass player, <laughs> cool. you know, whatever that whatever like petty drama there was, whatever whatever Fleetwood Mac <laughs> yeah, kind of stuff yeah. that they wanted to get into, or yeah. they go on their first tour and they realize. Fuck this. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, driving driving in a van across the country, even across the state, that's rough. It's a rough uh, time. I fell that's in love with it. I was on, I did my first tour when I, I, my mom let me go on my first tour when I was 17. Oh, and I cool. booked this band, this pop punk band called Simply Lost out of Santa Clarita on this nationwide tour. I didn't know what, what the hell I was doing, but my mom let me go on it first because it was during summer. And I fell in love with just, living on a highway and brushing my teeth in a gas station and <laughs> seeing all the lot lizards going into the, the, the bus, the, you know, the, the truckers, the trucker. I mean, it just, it just, I felt like I was home in these gas you stations. Gotta, you, you love a road trip, don't you? Yeah, dude. I love you a, road a vacation. Trip. Oh man. I, I don't have a road trip too. <laughs> so once I got a taste of that, I was like, I, I tried to go to, I tried to go to college to impress my my mom and dad, because my sisters are like doctors and stuff. So I went to San Francisco State knowing that it was only like eight hundred dollars a year to go there. <laughs> right. And uh and uh and I went there for a semester. I still had about like ten grand left for my bar mitzvah money. I'm like, you know, screw this. I'm not gonna be a teacher. I was like studying to be a philosophy teacher. I'm like, I'm not gonna be a teacher. I'm going to um tell my parents I'm quitting and I am going to figure out how to play an instrument on the road. So I bought this e350 van for 10 grand and i started craigslisting musicians in every city i, I cold called like 2000 venues and i got like maybe like 200 shows for that first year and i just like basically craigslist musicians like chuck berry style in every city and played like 
blues progressions and like three chord songs until I figured out because I could do like the front man stuff, but I, d- I didn't know how to play an instrument. So I'm basically like bullshitting my way through all these shows. <laughs> and I, you know, 15 years later, I've still been doing 250 shows a year and, you know, finally getting better at my instrument. But I just loved, I loved the music industry and I love just living at these in these hoedown towns for a couple days and sleeping at the bartender's house. And yeah, yeah. You, like, you get a, you, you get an actual sense of America when you're doing, Oh that. yeah. Cause you're going to like, you, you're driving through a bunch of these places. You're seeing stuff that like most people, you know, 80 year olds, 90 year olds have never seen that stretch of 40, right. you know, going all the way through uh, Williams going through, you know, uh, New Mexico, trying to get over like it takes forever to get to Oklahoma and you're just like driving and driving but you see you see like these vistas that you just can't imagine even oh, yeah. possibly exist well yeah it's like I love the idea of the traveling salesman I thought that was <laughs> so cool these like Harold Hills yeah of, dude you know the music man like these guys who would just like travel with their briefcase and like try to sell you something and I, I was just always so fascinated with that lifestyle of like living on trains and planes and, you know, s- sleeping in random motels and like, you know, Jack Kerouac's taking LSD and just oh, like I was meeting. Just talking about that the other day, man, on the road. One of my favorite books. So, it's hey, amazing. OK, so what's what's one of your favorite stretches? Like if you're on tour and you're driving and you're like, oh, man, I love this drive coming up. Do you I have love- one. Yeah, the southeast is really beautiful. The Appalachians and stuff is really nice. I love going, uh, you know, we tour through Europe and stuff a bunch. Like, I like going through Bavaria and going through the Netherlands and, like, you know, I love I love the gas stations. I love gas stations. I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> I really do love gas stations. I'm just so uh, amazed by gas what's stations. Your, what's your favorite oh, the, gas the, the station? Petrol sta- the petrol stations in Germany are awesome. What are, no, I'm not knocking a good American- TNA, though. Or Bucky's is the best. <laughs> oh, yeah, Why is that? Bucky's? In Texas, I mean, they just have everything you need. They have pork sandwiches. They have burritos. They have uh, <laughs> camouflage hats. They have sweatpants. <laughs> and it's like everything you need. I mean, I love, I, I love variety. You know, like I'm, I, it's like. <laughs> I, I oh, felt man. Like and, supposed oh, to be in the circus or something. And you know? you're on the road, so you get a you get all those awesome places. Like you're gonna get a you get get to go to a Waffle House. You get to see oh, Sonics yeah. all over the place. You got a bunch oh, of man. magnets. Did you buy? Do you buy magnets on the road on the way? I used to until they until you know I don't put them. I don't have a house to you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, he doesn't have a bridge. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> put them on my van, you know? Like <laughs> so I, I stopped. I stopped collecting them. You know? oh. <laughs> Oh man. So, okay. So how'd you find the UN? That's an interesting story. So you're solo there. You're building this, this tour, the 200 day to year tour and you're solo. You're calling up these Craigslist guys and probably going through all kinds of interesting drama. Oh yeah. I've had 70 year old bass players to 13 year old drummers. You know, it's been (laughs) been a wild ride. This sounds spectacular i'm not gonna lie but the whole concept <laughs> sounds like a pain in the ass to me of yeah. the un no it's i mean sure sounds like a pain in the ass but also sounds just so so awesome yeah so you yeah. play with different people basically every single night yeah and it, it, you know help me build my chops because you know sometimes like if you're looking for a shuffle groove and your 73 year old drummer to only could do uh you know straightforward stuff like <laughs> all right well this blues is going to be real straight you know so it's just <laughs> you learn you learn how to adapt and i think that's the beauty of life and that's what helped me you know be okay with you know i always thought you know growing up in la you thought oh, i'm gonna be famous and what i'm 15, 16, you know, you have that idea because you see all these kids get famous and stuff. And I realized that was not my path <laughs> real quick. Mm. And it took me 15, you know, I'm, I'm st- we're finally selling out shows in like thousand cap rooms. And it, that I think that, you know, just the improv of life and blues and, and, you know, conducting all these different bands was um my way of learning that, you know, life isn't going to give you exactly what you want right when you get it you have to you know go with the punches and enjoy the moment what it is and that's how i found the un like one at a time like it took like you know two years until i found my guitar player you know it took two years of craigslist and people until i met sean and then i met my drummer at in when i was craigslist and shows in la i was trying to 
like, uh, you know, do, uh, you know, that key, you know, like how the local night at the whiskey where there's like fucking 25 bands and yeah. one plays yeah, for 15 yeah. minutes, you know, it's all like, these, <laughs> all these gear coming in and out all night. Oh, I mean, that's like weird. a warehouse. Yeah. No, so, that's why, that's why I like it when they do the, remember when we went to the mint the other day, Barry, they just, um, they had the, the, the house drum set. Yeah. That drum, so, those like, drums come the with drums the place. Are the, are the, yeah. y- you can, you could swap out a guitar real easy, but a drum set. No, yeah. that's the thing that takes 50. There's like HPV on the snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> So, but thought, hey, it's you know, a bar drum set. I mean, what I love on, about LA, you that? know, it's like, <laughs> I love that stuff, man. I, I didn't, I didn't even know the blues existed really until I got out of LA. Cause it's, I mean, there's, yeah, I was going to ask you, what about that baked potato spot here in town? Do is that yeah. a real place? I mean, yeah. They, oh, yeah. I lived, I lived down the street from there, bear. But like for, they do like real blues. Yeah. There, real or? blues there, like mm-hmm. real good stuff. And they have for, by 40, well, I'm asking years Andy, now. the blues performer. Oh, okay, Joe. I'm Joe sorry. goes there. And goes. Oh, I like that. But is it real? Thanks, I, I, no, no discernment here at all. <laughs> Joe, are you that type of dude? Like, um, when do you have a girlfriend? I have a wife. A wife. Like when she's about to come, you're like, don't come here because I'm about to come. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i'm not like that i i want uh, you know she she gets she gets to enjoy it first and then and then i get a i get a finish off yeah he's a people pleaser but i'm a people pleaser. but i mean i feel like that's like blues you know it's like uh they get off first you know and that's what i fell in love with yeah you know the the baked potato all these session guys who basically were raised by blues and raised by you know african-american music and now they're having to record, you know, the Justin Bieber's of the world, these one, four, fives mm-hmm. <laughs> songs that like the baked potato was their release to like get back to their traditional stuff. Because I remember like Mike Campbell uh, from the Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. He um, was my soccer coach when he was going through like rehab and stuff. And he lived no in the way. valley as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And his, oh, his and his band, the Dirty Light Bulbs, would play. At the baked potato, my dad would take. I wouldn't. I was too young to realize what was going on. But my dad, I was like, "Why is my dad so interested in my soccer practices?" It was so weird. <laughs> and I found out it's it's my Campbell from Tom Petty, and so we would go to the baked potato, and that was like that's how I really started. Like, oh, oh wait, your dad, the- your dad would take you over there. Yeah, because I had to. No have way, a- that's so cool, man. Yeah, just like, hey, diving. let's go, let's go listen to the blues, man. He was like a kid, dude. Yeah, and it was oh, so, man, that's so awesome. beautiful. Awesome. So like that's what I was saying. Like, isn't it amazing though? Like, we don't realize where our music was originated. Like, pop music is just basically our American music is just basically blues. And I had to yeah. get out of LA to realize. Yeah. Like, oh, these were the first people to come. You know. Because <laughs> they yeah, immediately LA- come here. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> See, and then they turn they turn all the blues into either pop or rock. You know, they just don't, they don't let it just be. We're the inside blues. the snow globe here in the Southern California. Isn't it crazy. Like, and like, you're, we don't realize that because we're so focused on just like trying to, trying to impress what's popular, you know, especially you guys didn't deal with that in radio. You probably see all these people trying to pitch their songs to you and stuff and, and whatnot. Like I'm radio is so fascinating to me because it is like, it was the outlet to have a fan base. In the earlier years, oh, yeah. you said the keyword oh. was, yeah, not no, even it, it, it could still it could still be there. I think, um, well, you I think could, there's hopes and dreams, but <laughs> right, got to turn yeah. around a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like that that idea. Like, think about like before radio. Like, think of like Bob Dylan years, and like those guys were just playing everywhere, like in the streets, like the mm-hmm. the Willie Guthrie's, the uh, the Van Zants, you know, like. That's who I fell in love with, but I had to fall. I had to leave LA to understand like, Oh, music industry. Isn't just about, you know, trying to, you know, impress that A and R or that radio guy in LA. It's like, Oh, actually it, you got to actually be good at your, at your craft. It's, it's well, it's that, but you know? now, nowadays it's really about the authenticity of it. Like, right. I think people are really, uh more cognizant now of like is someone just doing this because like that's the way to fame and money or is someone doing this because they love it 
And it's like with the stuff that you do, you can literally tell just by listening, <laughs> like the passion you got in there for well, the stuff that you're doing. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. just, you know, like I'm just going to, you know, bust out this this pop song, you know, and hopefully it goes it goes big. You're like, no, man, this is my life. This is my lifestyle. I want to be on the road. I want to, like, make people happy with music. And I want to inject my soul into what yeah. I'm doing. And it comes through. And I think that's more important nowadays. Yeah. And isn't it crazy how people like we forgot that we were supposed to live with an intention. <laughs> right. Yes. So, oh, man. It will. Yeah. I, you're, you're like me 25 years ago with, no, that, with, way, with way better hair. No, with think... Way better hair. <laughs> yeah, dude. What do you think, Barry? What do you think? I mean, we're jaded here in SoCal where we're I think right. we're levels ahead of everybody else in terms of like I don't know, like the creative side because we've been hit in the face with so many different creatives. Like right. you can't get you through your day without experiencing that where in other places, you know, you won't you don't see a guy playing a guitar and at a gas station okay. in Nebraska. You might I mean, you would know, but I don't think you would. No. <laughs> You know, so like I think, you know, once things are really good, then you start to take notice of them. But in other parts of the country, it's just like a lock music, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, it's crazy. Like music for them is 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 a soulful experience instead of a business, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's what I had to do. I had to learn that. Like my, I, could, I was having this existential crisis. Why do I love the music business so much and then like and i would just like stay up all night like helping other people's bands that i loved so much and seeing them just quit over petty stuff i was like how are you this is so meaningful i know how much these songs mean we just give up so quickly on this stuff and i just told myself i'm never gonna do that i'm never gonna give up over pettiness and i'm just gonna keep going and even if it well, takes to you, to you, music isn't a job. It's a life. Yeah. Right. There's a difference there. You know, it's like, it's I mean, not just paying the rent. And it's like, it's, it's what you want to do to, to express yourself to other people. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and if you're living in LA and you're from LA, I got the same advice, Andy, from Rick D's Rick D's in the morning. Oh my God. Rick D's KRS 101. I yeah, he used to <laughs> so long. Barry, Barry used to produce for him. So I was yeah. his producer, man. We were on the top at the. I was only a couple years in, and you know, oh, I was not so into scary. pop music, but I understood it. Like, you know, I'm a radio nerd, so that you know, we were sitting there at lunch one day. It's just me and him and his high what rise. Two point seven two. Yeah, he. But yeah, I yeah, worked with them. After I worked with him right after that when he was at Moving ninety three nine oh, yeah. for a couple yeah, years. That's right. But um, he's sitting there talking about how you know how he's trying to beat Seacrest and he's and and I I was trying to ch like get him in better mood and I was like man you got all this here you have you've made a legacy for yourself. What advice do you have for me? Like how do, how do you do it now? And he told me he's like you got to leave L A. And do it right. somewhere else so you get perspective. Right. Because here is it's a snow globe. You know, you're inside of the bubble. And, you know, I took that advice. I went to Vegas and did radio and then Portland. And now I'm back. And now I have that perspective. So that's the best advice you can get from anybody when you're trying to be creative is get out of where you're at. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like taking LSD when you've never, <laughs> yeah. never done it or like psychedelics. Like the the bubble is real and then you realize they're like oh because i didn't i was really a prude person i didn't really take drugs when i was a kid and then i got on the road and I, i'm like hello <laughs> and uh it just really opened my eyes to um you know that there's more than just that snow globe like you said i mean that's such great advice and i think that's what helped me i left la when i was 19 i said i'm not going to come back here until I see my dreams fulfilled. So when I go back there, I'm not going to feel jaded when, you know, the industry people start, you know, the sharks start feeding, you know, tasting yep. blood a little bit, you know? Totally get it. See, I did that. I, I kind of, I never really, like I got my start outside of Los Angeles and then I came here, did the record industry thing. What I did is I actually left the industry 
to get oh, perspective. Um, like I, I left music altogether. I went into video gaming and I spent 20 years in video gaming. Yeah. And now it's like I've gotten to a point where I, I miss that creativity and radio and music and dealing with the artists part of it. Right. Um, so I'm trying makes to make you my better back. Right. You know, but I got that perspective outside of the industry to understand what I love about it most and, and what I have to give to people. And I right. think for me, that's being a cheerleader, making sure people know who Andy Frasco and the UN are. I love that's going to be yeah. my entire job. Love, for the rest you guys of are, life. I like you guys. I, I feel like we need to have a beer together or something. You, yeah. Hey, oh, I like this virtual beer right now. Okay. So joint instead. Let me, <laughs> okay. Fine. I have to run the next day, you know, beer really gets. Okay. Me happy. Let me ask you a real question. I'm going to ask you a real question. Okay. So Okay. Do you what do you like better? Do you like performing or producing? Do you like being behind the scenes? I think I know the answer. Or do you like being in front of the people performing? Um I I'm it's easier for me to be in front of the people. I think it's more rewarding when I'm producing, writing songs and and that song means something to somebody, you know? That's really what, you know, I'm trying to be a songwriter and I know I'm, I'm, I'm a really good entertainer and I know that I could do that, you know, sleeping. What's hard for me is trying to communicate a, words that, you know, that'll help people with their days. And when you, when I, when I like when a song, when I write a song that really does that, I, f I feel more accomplished. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah, absolutely. You're putting something good in the world that's going to help somebody. Like, yeah, and they, exactly. And, and I they didn't expect to be helped, too. Totally. That's the fun part. And I'm like trying not to belittle my entertaining and how important live music is to people. But um, I just love writing songs. Like, it's just when when it comes out and it feels good and you could tell people are singing it or, you know, m making them laugh or making them cry. I mean, you know, it. it Music is is about the human experience, and if we could, uh, if I could produce songs that, um, you know, relate with other people's humans' experiences, I think I, we're one step closer of like, you know, communicating on a different level, you know. But yeah. being that front man on stage, <laughs> oh, it's a that, fucking blast. don't don't do not do not <laughs> discount that. That is right. that's a hard thing to do. It's a blast. That is not. <laughs> That is not a skill that everybody in music True. has. True. You know, so I've been to a lot of shows where the band is technically great. The songs are awesome, but they have zero presence on yeah, stage. Dude. Like, and it makes for ah. a pretty boring show, you know? I, know. I can't I'm not gonna, my friends. Barry knows, Barry knows exactly what band I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to name them again. They're from Las Vegas. Talk, to, um, talk that shit, Joe. Oh, I, I think I know you're talking about. Hand yeah, okay. Who? Who? Panic at the Same. disco. No, that, that the counts though. <laughs> no, that counts, dude. Oh, the yeah, killers. They're, they're pretty the boring. killers. The, the, the killers. killers. Like yeah. Brandon Flowers <laughs> is, is pretty good. He'll run around a little bit. Man, He's trying his never, best. I don't know if the other guys in the band can actually walk or if they are just like propped up on stilts. I have never seen them move their feet. Yeah. Ever. Sometimes they're doing ever. their best. Sometimes it's cool. Like I thought the strokes when they weren't doing shit, like they had that don't give a shit type of feel. Uh I felt like that was cool, but you could tell like when some of the nerdier bands were just like just stiff and stuff. I'm like, come on, move a little bit. I'm like, I, I don't want to. Here, here's another one, Weezer. <laughs> I love oh, yeah. Weezer, man. Those guys move very, very little during a show. I know, but that so... was cool back then, right? But but also, but it's not the '90s anymore. <laughs> we grew up listening to. I don't know. I don't know what you were listening to, Barry. I didn't ask you yet, but m help me commentate on this. We were listening to bands from the Warp Tour who were like strangling themselves with microphones and yeah, crowd dude, surfing uh, and Rise yeah, Against was, Less Than Jake. Um, yes, exactly. Man. Yeah, it's horns. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Less exactly. Than Jake's awesome. Like they're they're probably like one of the best live bands. Mm -hmm. is Less those than Jake. that was, those so were the fun. days, man. I used I did a four, in 1998. I did 14 days of the Warp Tour. It was like changed my life. It was your 17. Oh, seriously? Yeah, I did. Dude, I, did I did. Uh, I did what four days of the Warp Tour? That what? That, yeah. yeah, but no, I'm right that, there I went with to that you. Somerset show in uh, Minneapolis, so like outside fun. of Minneapolis. It was 
Warp Tour and Ozfest in the same place at the oh same my day. God. How did it was 150,000 people. Ozzy was on uh last. What city? But it was awesome because Lagwagon was there and I was just like, oh hey dudes. And they're like, oh Joe, what are you doing here? And so it was like Lagwagon, me, it was m- me, Lagwagon, Mad Caddies, and oh God, there was another Santa Barbara band. Oh, and the Ataris. So it was us. They saw me. They're like, F are you doing here? It's the middle of the country. I'm like, hey, I don't know. Record label set me out. I wanted to hang out with you guys. So we just ended up partying all night. It was great. They like took me backstage, introduced me to no effects. It was a good time, man. Isn't it great? I mean, like, that's one thing I love about California punk rock. It's just like full out, full out expression. Yeah, and that's right. Like, like I, that's what I wanted to bring to, you know, the alternative and indie folk scene is like, like you said, it's like so boring. I'd rather if you're just going to stand there on stage, I'd rather just listen to you in my car. I'm not going to. I have too many <laughs> things to do to like drive. You know, in L.A., it's such an ordeal to go anywhere. Yeah, like, I don't want to be more animated. Tanky. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, you. Drive, yeah, exactly. I don't want to drive 30 minutes, get parking, pay 10, 10 p.m. at night. Yeah, it's on a Wednesday. Play. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> give me a fucking show. <laughs> yeah, what I paid for, god damn it. All right, hey, that that brings me uh You know how goddamn expensive like, these drinks are? I'm sitting here, they make me drink one while the stupid band for before you. What the heck is this? The I'm band before you is on and I got to no suffer through soda. that. Yeah. So you could impress your girlfriend with your ballad song. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Andy. Yeah, what yeah, dog. What kid. band? Since we're talking about it, what band do you think it would be most fun to play with? Ooh. I like think, if you had to open or close for someone, who would you want to bring on tour and, and play with? I I mean, I don't know if I'm taught am I answering this through nostalgia or if I'm answering this through hey, 35 year old Andy Pasco. Real Big Fish was the coolest oh, band, man. dude. They're so fun. They're oh so my god. It was just such a happy show, and every and the horns were just in your face. And I loved ska music. I loved the Arx Bandits. I loved Aqua Bass. I mean, growing up like LA and watching shows at the glass house in orange county and like pomona and and like the chain Man, reaction we do have to hang out you seriously are like me 25 <laughs> years ago and i love it um if you want do you want aaron's number i can just like yeah. throw you a cell and you can like throw you know see if real big fish wants to play with you i would love it i've been trying to get them on the podcast you know they play still all the time i just saw them a couple oh. years ago i, did, I didn't the- think that we so would fun. bond over third wave socal ska in this, <laughs> but you know, save Ferris and and oh my god, uh, save Ferris is the shit too. Oh my, yeah, all them. Oh, wait, oh, then you know this. Okay, I'm gonna throw out some ska bands from the do you, uh, one eye open. Okay, one eye open, okay. nobody knows. Knuckle Brothers, do you remember them? I remember Knuckle Brothers, uh, Knuckle Brothers, Skank and Pickle. Yeah, didn't remember Skank and Pickle. Oh, Skank, oh, dude, check up, check out Skank and Pickle on I mean, Spotify. That's not you're, fair. you're gonna really, you're this gonna isn't really a fair game. The Scuba Kids, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, they oh, became the Mowgli's. Get out of here. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. I got wow. to interview them in 2014. I didn't All these know Cobalt that. fans. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, my home venue was Cobalt Cafe. So, you know, Incubus. Um, mm-hmm. It was. Uh, oh, did you ever see Open Hand? Hoopa Stank. No, Hoopa Stank. I, oh, I was Hoop- going to say Hoopa Stank. Hoopa Stank. Man. Oh, Hoopa Stank. Remember yeah, Neural? Yes. Oh, uh, what? A, oh, do you remember Oscar? Uh, everyone who's listening to this, like, we have no idea what you're talking no, about. No, yeah, I bet like, they do. They're dreaming. They're like, oh, now. I was there. Because a lot of people moved down to California. They're like, not here, but they're here. Right. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> At least I like to think so. I, me too. You know, all my hey, friends. You can, you, you can go, you can move out we of SoCal. That, you can't like, get the SoCal out of you. We say that, but all my friends did not leave Los Angeles. Not all. mine neither, they're, dude. They're still grinding it out out there. Or man. they're like in um, Lancaster or... Palmdale, right. <laughs> yeah, Antelope yeah. Valley. We bought a house in Santa Clarita, man. You should check it out. Not Los yeah. Angeles. Oh, I mean, my it is Los Angeles. Like, yeah, Thousand Oaks is the spot, bro. I'm like, you are so far away. Oh, Gura Hills, man. Like, yeah, Siberia. lady face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's talk music, Andy. Okay. So how yeah. many albums you got out? Let's talk about this latest one, man. Let's talk about that journey. Um, I have um, I have five albums or six well, I had I had eleven albums out, but my man too many albums, man. Yeah, my my manager made me uh, cut five of them so I looked younger. <laughs> so, so I look younger. 
So, oh, man. And, you know, for the record, too, I have too much. five albums. I have five albums right now. And uh, my newest record, La Optimus, comes out in August. And um, I'm, I'm really proud. You know, like, I don't know when you work on a pro- record and, and movies are kind of like the same thing where you work on it. We work on a project for a year and uh-huh. you just get sick of it, you know. And this is the first album that it, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sick of. So, and it's like talking about, I, and it's like the first time I, I had a girlfriend and first time I've experienced a lot of new things. I've always just been selfishly living on the road. So a lot of my records are just about like following your dreams and being optimistic, you know, and this is like the, first. Oh, it's not like I bought myself a house, got to pay the bills. You know, it's not like that kind of stuff now. <laughs> That's like the that, next uh, one. Got, got to take yeah. my girlfriend out to dinner tonight. Got to buy her the roses on yeah, it's like a, Bruce, Day. a Bruce Springsteen album. <laughs> Just a blue collar man making two hundred million a year. <laughs> but um, oh, man. yeah, but uh, you know, this record's about finding out that. You don't have to just have one passion in life. You could have a bunch of different passions and, you know, and, uh, La Optimist, the, the album's called La Optimist because, uh, you know, you know, I've been on the road for 15 years wondering when this dream is going to, you know, finally happen. And, uh, but I never gave up on it, you know? So I always, you know, think of myself as, um, you know, even through the, I've, you know, ups and downs have been dropped by five record labels. I've been dropped by three booking agencies. I've been, you know, chastised for, you know, taking drugs on stage and whatever it is. And, <laughs> and, uh, through all that, we're, we're finally getting radio play now. And I just, you know, I, I've been non, I, I've been unapologetically myself the whole time and it's finally paying off. And that's what this record's about authenticity shines through yeah, man dude. and don't worry you're never going to get dropped by us or 885 because you let's go that. let's go you're yeah, good dude. peoples you're i love it we're no, all keep going together you know we're i mean oh so I, I need to ask part. though are you are you optimistic did you name the album loptimist um because you're optimistic about buying the boat that you have on the album cover <laughs> oh my God. do you own this boat I yet are you optimistic so about biting it no, I love I love West. You know, you know, you you guys probably understand this too. Growing up in LA, like film is part of our culture, you know. And Wes Anderson. Oh, are you gonna drop some Wes Anderson on us right now? <laughs> I love Wes Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, Wes Anderson wouldn't put a newfound glory in his track on his movie, but <laughs> maybe I'm like the emo Wes Anderson. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. But yeah, I love film and I love, I love art direction and, um, I've always wanted a sailboat and my last producer, Rick, Rick Parker, he's an LA guy and we'd like be in the studio all day and he'd have a, he'd have a sailboat in Marina Del Rey and we'd be all stressed out like five days in a row mixing the record. We're like, fuck, why is it, you know, we're just overhearing everything. He's like, you know, man, let's just go on a sailboat and he has a sailboat on the boat. And we just Let's get out to uh, Catalina. Laps. Yeah, we just did a couple laps in Marina del Rey, and it was the most therapeutic thing I ever experienced. And um, and I've I've always been fascinated with sailboats ever since. So I do I definitely want one, but I heard they're just a pain in the ass. You know, it's like maintenance, it's like a, dude. Yeah. The maintenance, it's like a rich person thing. I'm not. No, I'm not it's like the hard the the hardest thing is is getting a slip. Right. Like you can't get a slip. Like my buddy, my buddy Andy uh, Poonzy. Hi Poonzy, how you doing? Um, he. He has a boat. I think uh, he might have sold it. Uh, anyway, he he had his boat and he was able to get the boat. Fine. Got got everything he wanted. It was like twenty five grand. Did like three grand of, of upkeep and, and modification. Yeah. He couldn't find a slip anywhere, anywhere in Los Angeles. So insane. Anywhere. And I heard he had to go. He had to go up to freaking Ventura. Yeah. And like, if you're like, I was thinking about trying to buy a, a, just a rundown boat and get a slip. Mm hmm be cheaper to, than trying to get rent in, some, in you know a different area if but you i can get a slip reason. you can't and get then, a slip and then if you can get a slip most of those slips don't allow you to live on your boat right Th- three it's days a week only that's it you can't oh that is so then you're paying basically rent on a slip is like 1500 bucks on a hang on a one. second you can't it's even terrible. live on a boat no, anymore because let, of the no. government they won't let you live in in the marina anymore uh yeah. on the boat Another thing I didn't it. think we would cover on this interview. <laughs> this is a very LA episode and I love it. I'm I here. love it too. Okay. So I have another, this is a new bit, Joe. I'm going to ask everybody that we interview here. 
So we have a producer, Andy. His name is Bard, and it's AI. <laughs> and I don't know if what? Uh, an AI assistant. Oh, you. Oh, an a, oh, you. Your you, your co-host is AI. Yeah. So our, we asked our co-host is Bard from we, Google or whatever. We asked our Amazon. assistant, our our producer Bard, about Andy Frasco in the UN. And Joe, I'd like you to read what Bard says about. Andy, oh, okay. Andy, Andy, I need you to tell us if it's true or false. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. This is right. what this is what Bard says. Wait, I'm reading this whole thing. That's a lot. Well, there's a couple of things. Oh my Man, god, that's a lot. This I'm just so like insane. this is like a book. All right. Uh, Andy Frasco and the UN are an American blues rock band formed in Los Angeles, California, in 2007. Band yeah. consists of Andy Frasco, Ernie Chang. Sean Eccles and a consistently rotating and evolving cast of additional band members to form the UN. Hey, so far, so so so, so good. Uh, recognized for their heavy tour schedule and DIY DIY work ethic, band has toured U.S. numerous times as well as Europe and in China and China and oh, China and the and performing China. festivals. Blah blah blah. Sacred Road Festival. No, no, oh, wait, you hold playing, on. You, you you're are skipping the over the part. You're skipping hey, over the stop. part where it says what? performing at festivals such as, and then it lists Waka all Lusa, of these Electric festivals. Electric Forest Festival, Sacred Rose Festival. Yeah, but I jumped to Yonder Mountain Spring Band. Dude, you're playing Yonder Mountain. <laughs> oh yeah, do you remember? Because that's freaking awesome. I love that. I love that. That. Uh, that tour is just so great. Oh, yeah, the, we got into uh, bluegrass oh, now. That and you're playing good. String Cheese Incidents Festival at Horning Hideout. You're, mm -hmm. oh man, you're playing a lot of good stuff. Man, oh, jazz blues. So guy. that's all true. Then yeah, that's a the the such as performing at festivals such as I thought they just listed a bunch of festivals that are examples. <laughs> oh, those are all. Those are all. I've played every single one of those. Awesome, dude. Okay. So awesome. Yeah, we do. Okay. I mean, we're a festival band, so like, th like this summer we're we're doing fifteen festivals. Oh, every that's so cool. Okay. Yeah, every weekend we do two festivals, a weekend like in a, each city. Like, we're like this weekend we're in Pittsburgh, and then we're in Illinois, and then next weekend we are in like West Virginia. You know, it's like so. So the the festivals aren't shafting you and giving you like the doors open at, at noon and you guys start at eleven thirty a.m. Right? I mean, we've we've had ten years of that. <laughs> <laughs> can can we at least get you into like the three or four yeah. or five p.m. We're, range? We're getting the five to six to seven slots. Now. Hey, yeah. see that's better. The the five p.m. to seven p.m. range right before the the headliners go on. That's a great time. Not the one p.m. though. That is no no. No, That's I mean, for like the high school band coming out and yeah. has played together for like six months. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're moving up in the, in the, I just love festivals. That's, have you, yeah. That's the only thing I didn't, they didn't, they didn't really have a lot of festivals in LA. Like they had Joshua Tree Fest, I guess. No. Nah, and the Warp Tour was at Dodger Stadium in 112 yeah. degree weather. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, really? You, you did it there? Cause I, I hit it in one. Irvine. Yeah. Ventura one was my favorite one. Me too. Like yeah. On the beach, Seaside Park. It was sick. Oh, it's, it's just such a great, great place for a show. But yeah, I love festival. I mean, that's where I, you know, I, I mean, I feel like, you know, going back to being a front man, like that's where I, that's where I shine at those festivals where everyone's out there taking mushrooms and seeing a crazy <laughs> Jewish guy. So, so they, I, wait, you know, so are you, you, are you like an outdoor venue kind of guy? You prefer those? Cause I, I, I like, love seeing um, a show outdoors. I like outdoor venues. Like my dream is to play the Greek or Hollywood bowl or like even like the yeah. Ford the theater is killer. I thought yeah. the, I think the Ford is such a great underrated play, you know. Yeah, really. Well, because everyone forgets that it's just like tucked away in, in the Kawanga uh, corridor right there. I actually lived like walking distance. My friend and I would like jump up to Ford Theater and see yeah. like string cheese whenever they played because it was walking distance from our house. It was awesome. Yeah, because I I moved to Denver and because oh, I and love, you were right by Red Rocks. Yeah, we play Red Rocks. That's our every summer day to the a Red Rocks <laughs> wow. show. That's Wait, awesome. you played Red Rocks already? Yeah, it's our fifth time playing it. Oh, Whoa. dude, you you are the envy of like every single know, other dude. band. We That's have what everybody ever says they want to play. Everyone's like, because my my normal question to people are, hey, what venue? If you could choose any venue, what venue? Fifty percent of the time, Red people Rocks. are like, oh, Red Rocks in Denver. Man, we're gonna tell everybody, hey, you know, Andy Frasco's played there like five <laughs> times, man. Where, LA why, why it, you baby. Got there? We're moving up, these locals. The locals are moving up, Big Daddy. I'm clapping for myself. Oh, man, this is a great interview. I love this. Dude, uh, well, we, we could talk to you for five more hours, and, dude. Anytime and you want it. Anytime, you know, I love 
talking shop. So anytime, just hit me up, man. No, we'll have oh, you well, back hey. for sure. Oh, but tell us what you're going to do this Saturday on 88.5. Oh, yeah, you're oh. wrapping up. This is your last, I think your last oh. one in May. It's nostalgic. I'm like, uh, I, went, I went back to my roots. You know, I, I started, yeah, because I, I was like, I remember 88.5. When I was a kid, because that's a CSUN channel, right? Or it used to be the yeah. CSUN channel. Yeah, still, still, no, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're still here. Okay. We're still remember. community radio, man. I love it. And like, I used to listen to that, you know, you know Valley. That was it. I mean, unless if K-Rock was playing the same three songs, you know, now I remember the, I'd put on 88.5 and I actually hear some like, you know, alternative, you know, hip stuff. And it was just nice to like keep with that tradition. So I, I put on a lot of new bands this this week. That um that I've seen on the road and stuff and try, you know try to help the homies out. So, all right, can I Dude. can I make one request for for programming? Oh Go God, you. here we go. Can you, can you can you play my my favorite real big fish song? Which one? This is it. Oh my God, I'm on it. That's your favorite one. Yeah. Come on, of all <laughs> the what? real big fish That's songs, a good this idea. is I'm, it. I'm gonna. What's wrong with that song? I'm gonna put it on the playlist right now. Yeah, wait, I wait, guess. Wait, what, about, um, what about sellout? I mean, oh no, 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 no! It's I need this. That's the that's the one. Uh, that's the setup. Uh, it's the, the first setup, track. The setup, on, I need this. I get it because it's a big old, big old production and pomp um, and yeah. circumstances in that. So the setup. I need this by Real Big Fish. That would be great. <laughs> I got you, boys. I got yeah. you. All right, Andy Frasco. Let's talk about you. Do you? Which we're about to play here. Tell us about this. There's a story behind this song now. Tell them about it. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm trying, you know, we play a lot in the South and stuff and with um, the transphobia going on and stuff. And my my manager is trans as well. And I wanted to support, I, I want to support they. So I uh, wrote this song to try to fight legislation to, um, you know, let people be who they want to be. And I, I, I dressed up in drag and I had a, a whole crew of, um, you know, like, RuPaul's crew helped me um, do it, you know, appropriate, not just like I'm just trying to like, you know, you, you got professionals. I had professionals that helped me out and like uh, learn about the culture and learn about um, the, the the society that we're living in. And mm -hmm. it's horrible what's going on in the South. You know, we're so lucky that we have a bunch of artists in Los Angeles that we don't really think about that kind of stuff. But like some of these cities in the South are banning drag and stuff and i'm a straight white i guess they call me sus male or cis male sus. Like, I, <laughs> you're very sus very sus it's sis it's sis. It's it's, the it, it, yeah, but you know what i mean like it's hard yeah. for me to like approach this without people thinking that i'm making fun of it or whatnot and i just want people to know that even we got your back too so no yeah. that's no it's fantastic people in marginalized groups need to know that we are here to support them. Even yeah. We might not be like actually part of your community, but we are here to support your community. I think that's fantastic. Thank you, man. Okay. One final question, Andy Frasco sans the UN today, just Andy. I, uh, I'm really excited about finding out the answer of this one, Joe. Uh, oh, okay. Prepare All right, yourself, here, Andy. Here it goes. Here comes the question. Fight or flight. Would you rather get into a battle to the death with one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? A battle to the death, Andy Frasco. Oh, my God. I feel like, I mean strength in numbers right so i think i'd have a better chance with the big duck you know thinking as an optimist of david and goliath always always rooting for david you know over goliath i think i am going to go with the big the big ass duck big ass duck okay everybody says it but you know you i think once you see the big duck in person you're like that's a big duck i don't <laughs> that, actually you might that's be right a big duck then i then i think about like um um, Starship Troopers. <laughs> Remember that movie? They had those little, those little oh. alien guys. And they, oh, the just, little man, bugs. Kill the bugs. Kill the, bu Kill the bugs. You know, either way, you're fucked. Yeah. That's the moral. That's the answer. Yep. Um, yep. Man, this is an interview for the ages. Way to go. Dude. <laughs> yeah, man.
Thanks for having me, man. Keep making music so we can keep having you on and talk about yeah, it. Man. Exactly. And, you know, um, shoot me an email. I'll give you my number. Let's get on a group text and just start talking shit. Hell yes, yeah. brother. That's All funny. right. Here comes You Do You from Andy Frasco in the UN. Thanks for being on, Andy. Thanks, buddy. Don't. 